How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Radio with Dave Meltzer. Dave, how you doing today? Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there. I really, I wanted to start this, and for whatever reason, my brain made me say, how's it going, everybody? Because I've been listening to a lot of Wrestling Observer Radio podcasts recently, and I just decided to continue from there. Professionalism on my channel. Uh, yeah, new episode of All Sides Wrestling World. I don't know when this will be up- uploaded. I recently filmed another episode of YouTube Take, which I'm going to upload as soon as I get the chance. So this should be, you'll probably see this after YouTube Take is uploaded. Uh, for the people that, that like YouTube Take, I appreciate that. Myself, Markeem, and Phil worked very hard on that. And we all really, really, really enjoy it. And we're glad that you guys like it. And to all my wrestling subscribers that feel sad because I've been giving them a video in like three weeks, here you go. Uh, my Outsides of Wrestling World, I think it's a pretty good amount of views for the stuff I talk about. I'm kind of surprised actually that how many people are interested in me talking about PWG and CZW. But times have changed. And uh, I want to do more rant videos. I, a lot of people seem to like that stuff. Another video I was going to do was... Uh, was um, uh, what's what was the fucking topic? It was uh, oh yeah, the uh, the CM Punk storyline and uh, how I actually think it's a really really good thing. And for once, I don't think Raw is that bad. I don't watch the whole show. I get the channel here in college, but I don't watch the whole show. I kind of just watch the parts I like on YouTube. But as far as their main event angle goes, it's, it's pretty good. I think CM Punk segment. CM Punk three weeks in a row. He had an amazing segment with Bret Hart, amazing segment with Mick Foley, and an amazing segment with Jim Ross. Uh, can't beat that. Uh, I'm really liking his work, and I think it's a very interesting storyline. It makes a lot of sense. And for once, the main event angle on Raw that's not on the road to WrestleMania or the road to SummerSlam is it shitty. And I think we should be a little more appreciative of that. But anyways, that's a video for another day. Uh, all sides of wrestling world, basically. Uh, CCW, PWG, uh, Chikara, and WWE. Uh, PWG, I'm actually catching up on, finally. I still need to see Three Mendes. I have Three Mendes. I actually have the DVD for this one. I have Three Mendes in my laptop as we speak. So, once I finish this, I'll probably, that's probably gonna be the next thing I watch. But, let me get into this. Uh, SummerSlam, don't want to talk about it too much. I thought it was a fun show. You know, no match was... I mean, the Morella Cesaro match, I wouldn't say was a good match. It was actually not a very good match, but it was really short. They didn't do a whole lot. It was just, it was just there. But I didn't hate it at all. It was just, you know, I can't rate it high. And I can't give it an NA either. So, but Cesaro won the title, which made me really happy. After the main card, Daniel Bryan Kane, Ms. Rey Mysterio, I thought were raw matches, but they weren't bad raw matches. In fact... If those two matches happened on Raw, I think people would say, man, that was a pretty good TV match. And they decided to put it on pay-per-view. Same thing with Kofi and Truth and Primetime Players. Those three matches, none of them were bad. In fact, I would say they were almost, all three of them were almost good. I think all three were just missing a little something so I could put my stamp on it as a good match. But they were all very enjoyable. They were very enjoyable TV matches that the WWE put on pay-per-view. Ziggler and Jericho was like a Raw main event. Uh... It was very, very good. Match of the night, in my opinion. Very entertaining. Um, how do I say this? For those four matches, I enjoyed them all. But I think what made them special to me was SummerSlam. SummerSlam is at WrestleMania. But I do think the SummerSlam atmosphere, the SummerSlam name, I still think that carries something. The matches, like, when I was watching these matches, even though they were raw quality, which isn't a bad thing, I was telling myself, man, these are raw quality matches, but... With this crowd, with this atmosphere, and the crowd wasn't good at all. Well, it wasn't particularly good. But I don't know, just the stage, the atmosphere, the production values of SummerSlam, I don't know, it made me feel like these matches are more important than normal. And that's why I enjoyed them, I guess, a lot. Sheamus and Del Rio and Punk Big Show Cena, I thought were good title matches. I don't think people realize that almost every year at SummerSlam, we get a throwaway title match. Almost every single year, there's one title match that's just a non-finish. I think last year was the exception because we had two great title matches and we got spoiled. But every other year, 
2010, Seamus Randy Orton. Seamus uh, Orton wins via DQ. 2009, Cena Randy Orton. We got that really, really fucking screwy finish with like the three endings. 2008, uh, 2008, uh, Punk JVL and uh, what was the WWE title match? Uh, oh, Triple H and Kali. Okay, th those are pretty normal. But 07, Batista and Kali. Was it Batista and Kali? Yeah, Batista and Kali. That that was a shitty match, also with a DQ finish. 2006, Batista and Booker T, another DQ finish. I I, I really don't think we fully appreciate that uh, nowadays we actually get, you know, finishes. And uh, they're good matches. Both of them were really enjoyable. I enjoyed both matches a good amount. The three-way I thought would have been the match of the night, but the ending I didn't like. I don't know. It's like the ending of every... And I get that they were building that. That was part of the storyline that could Cena hit the FU on the big show. But it's 2012. I saw Cena do that in 2004 at WrestleMania. I saw Cena do that at Survivor Series, actually, at 2003. We know he can hit the move. I don't know why that was a decently contributing part of the storyline. Can Cena FU the big show? We know he can. We, and then for the, the climaxes, he finally did it and Punk robs him of the glory of pinning the Big Show. Come on, I wasn't a fan of that at all. But still a good match. Not as not as good as the Ziggler-Jericho match, but still like very close. And the main event, uh, I saw this one live. I thought it was okay. I thought it was pretty almost good. It was slow. But it wasn't bad. I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people who really hated this match, and I know a lot of people who really loved it. You know, it was a story match. It was different. It was slow. Lesnar was kind of just beating up Triple H while Triple H worked over his diverticulitis. They traded a few finishers, and Triple H hit the pedigree, and Brock powered out of it on a on a zero, kind of hit the Kimura. That was an awesome finish. You know, it wasn't a bad match. I for me, I get that it, they would told the story, but still, it doesn't make it automatically good. I thought the action was a little too slow in my opinion, but it wasn't bad by any means. I would say it was almost good. I would say it was actually the worst match in the show uh, since the Morello, Morella Cesaro match was on the pre-show, but it wasn't a bad match. Okay main event, and the right guy went over with a great finish, so I can't complain too much. So yeah, enjoyable show. Like I said, I enjoyed every match, even the main event. I mean, I didn't, I wouldn't say it was a good match, but I still, I still got what they were doing, even if the action was a little too slow. And the opener, both world title matches were good matches. And the other three matches were fun television matches that they put on pay-per-view, but that doesn't make them bad matches. So 6-7-5, I think that's a fair rating. Enjoyable show. Uh, the Chikara shows. Uh, Shoot a Crooked Arrow. Okay. Uh, this show was not the best of Chikara shows. It was still... It was, a, it was a solid show. I mean, I gave it the same rating as SummerSlam, and I said SummerSlam was a fun show. And this was fun. Every Chikara show is fun. I think that's what people need to realize. Every Chikara show is going to be entertaining. But th this show had a little more filler than normal. Uh, the first two matches were okay for what they were. The Mysterious and Handsome Stranger angle is really fun. But they, they, were both, they were both fine. They were both decent matches. Anthony Stone and Mr. Touchdown had a very entertaining match. A wonderful mirror fall sequence like in the last few minutes. Anthony Stone I really liked. I was really impressed with his work in the Lion, Young Lions Cup. That's what the Young Lions Cup is supposed to do. Like I, I, a bunch of people were complaining. Oh, Anthony Stone, ACH. Uh, who's the other guy? Like JT Dunn. Uh, what's the fucking uh, Aaron Epic. Like a lot of these, I want the young. Lions, I don't want the young Lions Cup to have names that are really good. Like I've heard people say, oh, like Gargano and all these people. Listen, I want the Young Lions Cup tournament to introduce me to indie wrestlers I've never heard of that are really good. And it did that with Anthony Stone, JT Dunn, Aaron Epic, and well, I, I knew of ACH before, but those three especially really made an impression on me. And I, I've seen Aaron Epic in CZW, but he didn't really shine like he did in the Young Lions Cup tournament. Uh, Bravados versus 3.0 versus Ultimate Spec, Freimer, Corbin, and Cannon. The match was okay, but the, the, the slow motion sequence was excellent, which made the match a good match. Because that slow motion sequence took up a lot of time and was very entertaining. It's one of the best slow motion sequences Shikar's ever done, honestly. Um, Kingston and the Shard, Jigsaw and 17. They weren't bad matches, but to me, they were just there. They were kind of just filler. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know why these, they do this a lot. Chakar likes to do it. The Eddie Kingston, like eight minute, seven minute squash. He did it against Ophidian. He did it against 17. He did it against the Shard. He probably did it against someone else. I don't remember. I, I just don't see the point. And I get that they want Eddie on the show, but why not make the match competitive? I get he's the grand champion and he's supposed to be better than everyone, but it's just a waste of time. I think to just do this match over and over and over again, like they've done throughout the year. Jigsaw in 17 was fine. This was more to further the story. This was more to uh, 
This was more to further the storyline of Quack and Jig and Quack's obsession with Seventeen and the Shar and Seventeen especially. But still, it's still a fine match for what for what it was. Um, next we get uh, ACH versus Jacob Hammermeyer. I talked about this in my uh, Chikar King of Trios report. This is the worst match of the year. It is so hilariously awful. I'm sorry, Jacob. I, I'm a fan of yours, but I didn't think you were that good in this match. My friend Brian and myself watched this match over and over and over again during King of Trios weekend because we just we couldn't stop laughing at some of the spots. But I still like, obviously, ACH is an excellent worker, and I still like Jacob Hammermeyer, so whatever. The the six-man was a fun six-man tag. Chikara, I mean, it's very hard for Chikara to have a dull trios match. It's almost impossible. And the main event was really good. Reminded me, it's, it's a lot of, if you like the Johnny St. Chikara matches last year, you'll love this one. It's a very similar style, except with a little more high spots towards the end. It was a very well-laid-out match. This was like Cole Cabana's best match, like in years and years. And that's not a knock on Colt, but I've never seen Colt like this motivated and this ready like to have a good match. And he was here, so that made me very happy. So yeah, 675. Okay, show. There's just a little too much filler for me to call it a good show. Uh, Ring of Wax. Uh, this is a very good show. It's one of the best Jakar shows of the year. The undercard has even more filler than the previous show. Uh, when I say filler, I don't mean that like it was pointless, but I mean just that it was just the, the quality wasn't good enough to warrant it being a memorable part of the card. Uh... But I think, um, hold on, sorry, I'm turning up text. Uh, I think the main event is the Chikara match of the year behind the Gar the Fist uh, Young Bucks match at Camp uh, uh, Chikara Source Rex. I think uh, this beats Del Rey and Kingston, and I think this beats, uh, what's another one that I thought was great? Uh, Kingston and Jigsaw. This was amazing. ACH and touchdown. I already praised this match enough on Twitter. You just have to go see this match. I don't want to ruin too much of it. It's an amazing, amazing, well-worked match. Both guys just came off like superstars after this match. And like Ben Turpin, this is what he said. Like Ben Turpin on Twitter, a good friend of mine made a good point. He's like, this, that's why I love wrestling again. To see two young guys given the opportunity and given the stage to just show everyone why they're good. Because in Ring of Honor, I mean, they don't do that. I mean, they brought in ACH and they dropped him out in seven minutes. That's just, that's not how you use talent. So, very happy with the work from these men. Uh, the eight man, the eight man was also really, really, really good match. Very entertaining. Chuck Taylor was on fucking fire in this match. I, Jesus, he was just really, really on par. And that was a really good match. Kingston and Harlem Bravado was another very fun match. Easily the best match of Harlem Bra Bravado's singles career. Just very, very enjoyable. Kingston made him look good. See, this is the type of Eddie Kingston matches I want to see. They're stiff. But the other guy gets a good amount of time to have a good enough offense. And it comes off like you didn't waste your time. It comes off like a fun, productive match. The rest of the card, Mysterious Death Stranger with Lance Bravado was fun. The opener was uh, not very good. It was okay. It was okay. Just should have gone a little longer. Saturday and Tim Downs was just a squash and a vicious squash. Tim Downs fucking murdered this chick. I was legit concerned for her health. Ultramantis and Frymer versus Corbin and Cannon I thought was just kind of there. Quack and Jig versus 17 and the Shard. The Shard took a fucking awful bump. Like he does a he does a somersault on a Quack on the outside, but Quack ducks and he lands right on the stage. Oh my god, it looks so terrible. When we were watching this match, me and Brian, he does that spot and Brian just goes, what an idiot! <laughs> and I was laughing hysterically because it looked like he killed himself. Uh, but it did further along the Quack and Jig storyline, so no complaints there. So yeah, very, very good show. I mean, the main event alone, it makes it makes it a good show and the semi main event and the and the semi semi main event i guess uh all three of those matches are so entertaining and so worth your time the double main event is probably the chikara double main event of the year i don't know maybe chikara source rex tops it but it's close uh so yeah really definitely and it's a lot of fun a lot of good storyline progression by ring of wax the pwg shows these were a little old so i won't hopefully go in too much depth uh world's finest a fun show. Every match is pretty enjoyable. Kevin Steen beat the holy fuck out of Peter Avalon. The Joy Ryan Candice Ray match I just didn't like. I just don't like that dynamic anymore. Perkins and Scorpio had a fun wrestling match. The Rockness, Smash Bros, and Young Bucks had a super, super fun tag team match. Match of the night, easily. Really, really, really entertaining. Kozoff and O'Reilly and Willie Mack and Strong were both a lot of fun for what they were. Mack and Strong wasn't as good as their... Uh, uh, what's that show called? Uh, buh, 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 buh. What's that fucking show called? Card subject to change three from last year. That match was a great match. Arguably William Mack's best match in PWG. 
And the main event was a very, very fun three-way. Eddie Edwards, I thought, made it an interesting dynamic. Didn't like the finish. I just don't want to see that finish anymore. Uh, Generico, I think, hits the Brain Buster. Kevin Steen throws Generico out of the ring, pins Eddie Edwards. I want something different out of a fucking three-way. I'm just goddamn tired of that finish. And I, this finish was even worse than the WWE one, because at least in the WWE one, they had the whole thing of like, oh, Cena finally hit the FU, as dumb as it was. Like, El Generico hitting the Brain Buster and Eddie Edwards, that wasn't like a long-awaited thing that Generico's always wanted to do. So, yeah, but the match was still very entertaining. Just wasn't a fan of the finish. Overall, it's a good show. I mean, with PWG, you know what you're getting yourself into. The consistency is just top-notch. Every match is just super enjoyable. DDT4, I thought it was a great show. I thought the show was a little underrated, actually. It got a lot of hype when it first happened. And then when it came out on DVD, a lot of people were a little disappointed because it wasn't like... It wasn't like DDT4 last year. It wasn't like Fear. It wasn't like Steam Wolf. It wasn't like an, oh my God, amazing show. It was just a great show. So a lot of people I thought felt a little underwhelmed. And I thought, I think that give, I think that's a little unfair. Because uh, <laughs> this show was a very entertaining show. Uh, of the first round matches, I mean, the two, two Husky Black Guys versus Callahan and Strong was a really fucking stiff, really, really, really enjoyable match. Uh, Smash Bros and Young Bucks, I think, is a little overrated. It was a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, but I mean, I didn't think it was that much better than the opener, if even better at all. It was really entertaining, but a lot of people were putting this over like, oh my god, the Smash Bros. coming out party. Didn't think it was that good. Rock Nest versus Husky Black Eyes was fun, but Smash Bros. and Future Socks was a great match. Great, great, great match. O'Reilly and Strong, it's a damn, O'Reilly and Cole, it's a damn shame they can't team up anymore in Ring of Honor because these guys are just amazing as a tag team. And this was, and I felt like we couldn't, we didn't really get the best of them in their Ring of Honor run. It is true, like Ben always says this, in PWG, like, there's no handcuffs. In Ring of Honor, that's why in Ring, when you see guys from Ring of Honor, whether it be the Future Shock tag team, whether it be Roderick Strong, like, every, almost everyone across the board, they do better in PWG than they do in Ring of Honor, and that's just true. And, like, supposedly, I heard a rumor, I don't remember who I heard this from, that Champa was probably going to be on the PWG show before he got hurt. Uh, if that's true... Uh, Shampa, I'm sure, would have tore the house down. And it would have been better than anything you see from the Ring of Honor. So, yeah. Uh, Future Shock Smash Bros. Amazing match. Well, not a great match, but near falls. Callahan and Steam was a fucking stiff as hell match. A lot of great a lot of great near falls towards the end. Steam, and, I mean, these guys really, really, really... It really looked like they wanted to beat the fuck out of each other. And that's what they did for like 10 minutes. And it was very entertaining. And the main event was a great match. Match of the night, in my opinion. This match was like the Super Smash Bros. coming out party. That's what I felt, at least. Husky Black guys, I mean, Generico is just so good. And Willie Mack, that, that, that Generico to Willie Mack spot that everyone saw in the preview is just absolutely amazing, even though I knew it was coming. And Smash Brothers, and I think Steen does commentary. Whenever Steen does commentary for the Smash Bros matches, like, because he says that uh, Player Uno is his half-brother and Player Dose is a really good friend of his. So, like, he legitimately, like, cares for these guys and wants them to do well. And whenever he starts marking out, whenever they're getting close to win, I mean, it just feels really genuine and makes the win feel that much more special. So, yeah, great match, great show. Death to All But Metal, another show that I think is underrated. Uh, Steen and Brian Cage had a very, very entertaining match. Brian Cage has improved so much in the past year. Uh, the six-man was a lot of fun. Or was it eight-man? No, no, no. The six-man was super entertaining. Candice, that was a great use of Candice LeRae. Not the normal singles match with Joy Ryan or Von Eri. Put her in a six-man with multiple guys and see what she can do. And that makes her spots where she gets hurt that much more important and special. Elgin and Mack had a very entertaining match. This was a big guy match. Just like big guys throwing each other around for like 15 minutes. And it was super, super, super entertaining. Elgin and PWG also. He looks really, really good. Generico and Ricochet, I thought it was a great match. Better than their match at uh, Cyanide, I think. Ricochet has just improved so much in the past year. I don't think people realize that. Like in the past year or two years especially, like when he first started getting hot in the indie scene in 2010, compared to what he is now, like he's just 10 times the type, the type of wrestler that he was back then. And he was good back then. He legitimately, I think, is one of the best in the business and one of the most underrated. And the tag match, smashing Young Bucks, the match of the night. This is what I was talking about. Those last few minutes just felt so special. Like I said, the last few minutes, Kevin Steen was just marking out. The crowd was going insane. When they finally hit their finish and won the titles, the crowd just popped big time. And you could tell it felt like a big deal. It felt important. And I felt so happy for them. And Steen coming out and giving them both hugs and giving them the belts. Just an amazing moment. Fantastic match. Uh, so yeah, 8.25 out of 10. Another great show from PWG. This one's also, I think, is a little underrated. Needs a little more love. 
All right, CZW, Prelude of Violence, A Torment of Death. Prelude of Violence was kind of pointless. Uh, it wasn't a bad show. It was, it was okay, but it just I, after I watched it, I just felt like I did not need to watch this. Even Trademark, who reviews every indie show under the sun, even he didn't want to review this one. Uh, highlights. Uh, Kyle Hannon called it a fun opener, but obviously they've had much better matches in CZW in the past. Excellent and Chris was okay, but too short. Uh, the match of the night was Matt Tremont, Ron, Ma Ron Mathis, and Danny Havoc. They had a very entertaining match. Really enjoyable. Uh, really, really stiff. A lot of hard weapon shots, but it was really, really, really well done. The finish was great. A uh, very fun match. Gulak and Younger and Colin and Fox were just standard CZW matches, but they were really, really well done. Good use of near falls. Crowd got into both. Crowd got into both matches a lot. Last five minutes of the Callahan Col Cologne Fox match was fun, fun, fun. Not better than their Cinco de Mayo match, but still fun. And Gulak and Younger also very entertaining. One of Gulak's better non-hardcore singles matches in CZW. Jay Chris, TJ High was okay. They did a lot of crowd brawling. Uh, they did a spot where like Jay Chris's family apparently was in the audience. They had like his family members come up and beat up DJ. And then DJ just turns around and gives him a half Nelson, gives him a half Nelson German, lands and drops him on his head on the concrete, which was a nice, I guess, change of pace. Uh, and then they had a lot of interference. It was okay. I think I like this match more than most people. I think a lot of people really hate this match. Fuck! I just broke my bobblehead. What the fuck? I fucking broke my bobblehead. This is bullshit. God. All right. Let's try to keep kayfabe and finish this video. Uh, Jake Chris and DJ Hyde was, you know, a, uh, it was, it was, like I said, it was a fun, okay match. And... And the show overall is okay. There's there's a few good matches. There's actually like four good matches. More than SummerSlam. But there's just so much waste. Matches two through five are just like, oh my god. I really felt like I was wasting my time. And the main event, kind of underwhelming for a CZW main event. So, 6.5. It's okay. It's not anything to blow away. Tournament of Death, I thought was a lot of fun. Every match that Danny Havoc was involved in was really, really good. The, his match with Drake Younger was one of the better CZW matches of the year. That match was just super, super entertaining. Uh, Joey Gacy and Ryan Slater had a fun weapons match with an amazing finish. That finish was so well done. Props to both guys. I marked out big time when that match happened. All the weapon shots were very well done. They hurt each other a lot, but it was very enjoyable. Uh, every match involving Masada, Masada was a little disappointing. His match with Scott Summers I did not like. Um, and the, I mean, Scott Summers busted his head open and they actually show footage of them working on his open skull backstage. It's pretty, pretty disgusting. I'm not going to lie. You need to have a strong stomach to sit through that. Masada and Kobayashi was okay, but it was just way too long. Way too long. They did not need to go that long. Same thing with Masada and Drake Younger. It was okay, but God, they just went on forever. And it was clear Masada was beat up. Like he said, before the match, they teased that he wouldn't be able to compete to wrestle. And Younger was obviously hurt. He was also teasing that his neck was hurt before the match. These guys are just both beat up. So they methodically try to do a, like a 15-minute weapons match. And they did it like in 22 minutes. And it was very slow. And it was okay. I give both guys props for actually coming out and doing the match. But, I mean, it was clear they were both just so beat up that they could barely get through this match. But it was okay for what it was. Uh, Roy Mondo and Drake Younger was fun. And Kobayashi Tremont was short, but also fun. What makes this match better is the bonus match of, uh, the bonus match with, uh, with Danny Havoc and Lucky 13, a very fun light tube death match. Kevin Steen actually does commentary for this match and he's so entertaining, so entertaining throughout this match. And Rich Swan actually does some commentary too. That, that match was a lot of fun. Hyde and Younger was okay, but it was just way too short and I didn't like the ending at all. But nonetheless, Havoc at 13 was fun. So this show gets a 6.75 because it comes with the bonus Miami death matches that they filmed uh, before the Heat Dragging It USA show, I believe. Uh, there's three very good Danny Havoc matches on here and a very fun uh, Joe Gacy, Ryan Slater match. Danny Havoc, he's just really, really good. Like the more I think about it, he may be the best non, the best like, the best non-Gabe guy in that company. Like if you're not Air Fox, Adam Cole, Sammy Callahan, the best guy... Well, Adam Cole isn't Gabe. Adam Cole's ROH. But the best non-ROH dragging at USA guy in CCW is probably Danny Havoc. He's just so, so, so entertaining. He's really, really good at his job. Props to him. So, yeah. Um, okay, show. Fun. Better than Prelude to Violence. I would put this on the same level as SummerSlam in that, like, you know, there's nothing great, but there's a good amount of good matches, and everything else is, you know, okay for what they are. So, 6, 7, 5. Uh, that does it for me today. 
uh, CCW shows were fine. The PWG shows were all really good. The Chikara show was one was fine. One was really, really good. And SummerSlam was fine. Uh, I'm going to try to catch up on I'll, next on the next one. I'm going to do, I believe, No Surrender. No Surrender, New Heights, A Tangled Web, uh, some Dragon Gate shows, maybe some Evolve shows, and I'll try to catch up on and I just broke my bobblehead again. And Three Mendes. So, yeah, thank you very much for that. I'm Big Earth 310. Have a nice day, y'all, and goodbye.